A new era of Texas State football is upon us. The G.J. Kenny era as we welcome you to Bobcat Stadium. Alongside the newest head coach of Texas State football, G.J. Kenny, I'm Brent Freeman. And uh, Coach, first things first, welcome to San Marcos. I appreciate it. And Coach, uh, we appreciate you, you know, being here. And uh, first things first, what are your initial, what have your initial impressions been of this university and of the community here at Texas State? Yeah, it's been awesome so far. A very warm welcome. Um, you know, throughout the interview process, meeting with the leadership, um, you, you can really tell they're, they're hungry for a championship program. Um, and that was one of the things that really drew me to this place was the leadership and the community. Um, 40,000 students, you got a river flowing through the campus. Um, you know, these, these guys are hungry, hungry for a champion and, and hungry to, to make this place a program that, that they can be proud of. So just excited to be a part of it. Given the success of your coaching career this season for you at Carter Ward, your name was very hot among coaching hires. Your name was being floated out for other jobs as well. Why was Texas State the right fit for you? Uh, I think for all the things I just said, uh, I'm a Texas guy. Uh, first of all, um, I wanted to be here. I think Throughout the process, you know, as you as you as you, um, you climb up the coaching ranks, I always thought, hey, if if the right guy got the Texas State job, you better watch out. Um, this place is special. The leadership special. Um, it, it just needed the right guy, you know, leading it. And so I'm excited to, to to do that. You mentioned the leadership being so special. If you could take us behind the scenes a bit and the conversations you had with leadership during the interview process. Yeah, I think it was a fill out process and, and, you know, obviously the basic questions. But I think early on, we both kind of recognized that, you know, you know, I was their guy and, and I wanted to be here and I let that be known. And, and uh, from then on, it was pretty aggressive and uh, going back and forth with the contracts. But, um, you know, we, we've, we've got to you know, find a way to get a deal done and, and uh, just excited to be here. We also know that as uh, at this point in time, you're still currently coaching in Connor Ward. UIW is getting ready for its second playoff game at Sacramento State as you and I talk right now. Why was it important for you to make the decision to continue coaching that program until the season is over? Yeah, I'm a big believer in finishing what you start. And uh, that's a special group over there. Uh, they gave me an opportunity to, to be their head coach and, and they believed in everything and my vision uh, from the very beginning. So I wanted to finish with those guys and, and send those guys in the right way. It's been a special season for you. Again, as we talk right now, you are 11 and one coming off a playoff win over firm in a Southland Conference Championship. A lot of success in year one for you at, at UIW. You inherit a Texas State program, which has struggled to establish a winning culture since they moved up to this level in the FBS. What do you believe it's going to take to turn this program into a year in, year out, consistent winner? I think it starts with recruiting. We're going to recruit Texas high school football players. We're going to recruit the, the coaches of this state. Um, we're going to get in the portal as well and, and, and identify guys that, that played Texas high school football from here uh, to begin with. And I think it, it just goes back to your training, uh, your everyday interaction with the players. Uh, we're going to have a great coaching staff. We're going to have a great scheme, but it's all about the relationships that you build every day with your players. I was going to ask you about your approach to recruiting, and you know Texas high school football very well. You're, you're a high school football uh, alum in Texas at Gilmer, a former Buckeye. So uh, how important is it to establish those relationships? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's everything. Um, that's the first thing you know I did when I got the job. You know I started calling Texas high school coaches and, and recruiting Texas high school players, and and I appreciate um, all the all the coaches throughout this great state for for writing emails, for calling on my behalf, because um, I know that's important. So just want to thank those guys right now. I know a lot of our fans are very excited about the prospect offensively because they look at what the Cardinals have done this year. You're scoring 53 points a game that leads the country uh, across Division One, both FCS and FBS. Um, what is your philosophy? on offense what can fans expect to see on that side of the ball yeah we're going to be a tempo team uh, we're a run play action team uh, we're going to light up the scoreboard um, you know our, our quarterback currently at UIW uh, has 55 touchdowns and um, you know he, he can run the ball a little bit he's got seven rushing touchdowns so we're a run play action team with tempo uh, take care of the ball we're going to light up the scoreboard and, and have a lot of fun doing it Lindsey Scott has such huge shoes to fill. Cam Ward was the quarterback there a year ago, the transfers to Washington State. You kind of brought up some of his numbers. I mentioned the playoff win over Furman, had an incredible play where he's almost falling onto the, onto the turf as he throws the touchdown pass. So he's been a special quarterback. You were a special quarterback at Gilmer, at Tulsa, in the NFL. You know the position in and out. So how, uh, as you look at the quarterback position, what are you looking to get out of it? Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. Um, the psychology 
part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and the evaluation process. Um, like you said, I play the position at the highest level. I coach the position at the highest level. Um, you know, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know how to interact with the quarterback mm -hmm. on and off the field. Um, and we have other great coaches that, that, that will be surrounded by the quarterback. That'll be the same. And, and, um, you know, I think the, the evaluation, what, what to look for, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I sat in the quarterback room with Michael Vick, Nick Foles, Mark Sanchez, Matt Barkley, uh, Dennis Dixon. Um, I, I see those guys interact with their teammates every day, how, how they process things. And, and I think I just know what I'm looking for when it comes to the quarterback spot. One may make the argument that outside of the quarterback position, maybe the second most important position are the guys protecting them, the offensive yeah. line. And we know that at this level, it, it, a lot goes into recruiting and developing an offensive line. How do you plan on doing that? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a developmental uh, position. Um, I'm going to bring in a, a coach that, that's the best in the country at it. Um, I like big guys up front. Uh, big guys beat up little people uh, on the football field. And so that's kind of what I look at when in the recruiting process. And I think you have to identify high school uh, kids in the port and, and in the portal. But I think that the offensive line position is a developmental one. Um, so you have to get these kids that, that maybe don't look the part right, right when they're coming out of high school, but then eventually, uh, you know, you grow them into that 6'5", 330 pound guy that can maul guys up front. So it's a developmental program. Um, and, and, and so that's what, you know, I'm excited to, to get our coaching staff in here and to start recruiting these guys. What about the skill positions, receivers, running backs? What are you looking for out of that? Uh, speed. Um, speed is the first thing that, that pops into my brain when it comes to that. Uh, we want to go fast on offense. We want to create those mismatch, those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Uh, so speed always helps. I think the frame, um, when you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, high school kids, uh, uh, you know, especially you're looking to develop the frame, the speed. Um, and then I tell the staff all the time, like, what, what's these guys' superpowers? You know, like, what, what do they do better than anyone else? Is it, um, you know, they're, they're a deep threat. Are they, you know, slippery in the phone booth? Like, what is it that, that they're, they're special power? Identify that, and then we go from there. Looking at the defensive side of the football, you inherited a team which had its best defensive season at this FBS level, but a lot of those pieces are now gone. How do you plan on addressing the defense, and what kind of scheme and style can Bobcat fans expect to see on that side of the ball? Uh, same thing. We're going to attack on defense as well. Uh, we're going to swarm the ball, have a rel relentless effort on defense. Um, we're going to play with a, with a swagger to an edge about us. Um, you know, currently we lead the, the country in TFLs. We're number three in sacks for a reason. Um, and those guys are going to have a lot of fun doing as well. And, 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 you know, the first thing I did when I got here is start meeting with our current players and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, trying to retain the guys that are currently on the roster, the guys that have gotten in the portal. We've had yeah. some success with that. And, uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be an exciting brand of football. I think I think that's important in college football these days. The the type of football you play, the brand of football you play, offensively and defensive, uh, Lee, we're going to be exciting. We're going to be up up tempo, and we're going to attack on both sides. You talked about the staff earlier. How do you plan on building the staff? Uh, it's it's in it's in you know uh, the works right now. Uh, we're still playing, and so I, I like to you know be able to finish the the season out with my guys at UIW uh, before we we get into much of that, but. Um, it's going to be a staff um, that has a lot of energy that can recruit the state of Texas. Um, but also, uh, I told the team the other day in our team meeting, I'm going to I'm going to put together a staff full of great husbands, great fathers. Um, you know, uh, what what a role model is for these young guys. I think is a huge part of of uh, you know and collegiate uh, you know the athletic. Uh, collegiate athletics. You mentioned role models, and again, you've been in and around the game for so long, you know, as a player, now as a coach, uh, having been around so many great men, you know, in this profession, who are some of the people that have helped you along the way? Who are some of your mentors that have helped you get yeah. to where you are now? Yeah, I think you got to start with Jeff Trailer, a uh, guy that, you know, my dad coached me a little bit in high school, uh, and then he got a job opportunity at Baylor, but it starts with Jeff Trailer, who was my high school coach and, and somebody I've worked with at SMU in Arkansas. and just a, a you know a great mentor someone i bounce ideas off of and thoughts off of um then i think you know gus malzahn a guy that i, I played for and coached for mm -hmm. um chad morris same thing played for and coached for him todd graham same thing um a lot of great texas high school coaches or former high school coaches that, that went on to, to be uh you know really really um uh, great college football coaches as well so I think those are the names that pop off, you know, right off my head. What have been your initial impressions of the Sun Belt Conference? It's been arguably one of the top Group of Five conferences in the country over yeah. the past several years. They've had another great season. Several teams going to bowl games. Troy just won the conference championship yeah. there within the West Division, along with Texas State. What are your impressions of the Sun Belt? 
Uh, I know it's an exciting league. Uh, I know there's a lot of score, uh, you know, points being scored. Um, so I think that's why we're a great fit here. Um, but you look at Troy, somebody that played really, you know, great defense this year and, and had a lot of success this year in the conference. So, um, you know, we're going to do that. We're going we're to have exciting offense, exciting defense and, and uh, you know, a championship defense. I mentioned earlier that, you know, it's been a tough uh, time for this program playing at the FBS level, still trying to get to a bowl game, looking to contend for Sunbelt Conference championships. The fan base is hungry for it. The alumni hungry for it as well. And, and they're all excited that you are here to help make sure that happens. What is your message to them as you now take over the reins of this program? Yeah, we need everyone. Uh, we need everyone's support. Um, for these student athletes, it's, uh, we need Bobcat Nation to step up. Um, you know, our, our student athletes deserve that because uh, we're going to put an exciting brand of football uh, on the field. Uh, we just need your, you know, support doing that. Well, Coach, I'm looking forward to the fall of 2023. Can't wait for it. Awesome. Again, the newest yep. era of Texas State football begins now, the G.J. Kenny era, and that's going to uh, wrap things up here for us. For Coach Kenny, I'm Brent Freeman. Eat them up.